All right, here we go. Now remember, your homework is to watch this video, understand it, fill in this worksheet that you picked up on Friday, turn it in on Monday for your homework, and hopefully you'll have a, a much stronger understanding of how to set up these problems, and I can help you in class on Monday. Let's look at the first problem and just, you know, read over the steps. We want to state the variables. So here we have cakes and pies, and I'm going to make x equal to the number of pies, or sorry, the number of cakes, let's do it that way. And I'm going to let y be the number of pies. Okay, so once we have done that, we can set up our equations. They say we have a total number of 75 cakes and pies, so x plus y equals 75. Now, each cake sells for $10, so that's the coefficient, 10x, times the number of cakes. And each pie sells for $15, so 15y, and that equals $910. Now we can turn this system of equations into a matrix. And so we have the coefficient of 1 and 1, 10, 15, and this equals, well, we have the x and y, of course, and this equals the matrix 75 over 9, 10. So now all we have to do is find the inverse of this matrix and then multiply it times the other side of the equation. First, we have to find the determinant and put it over 1. So, 1 over... Here's the main diagonal, 1 times 15 is 15. And then we take the other diagonal and multiply that. 1 times 10 is 10. And we, of course, we subtract, and we get 1 over 5. And then we have to alter the matrix for the inverse. This is the main diagonal. We switch the elements. This is the other diagonal. We make the signs opposite. So that's a negative 10 and a negative 1. And now all we have to do is multiply that times this matrix. And everybody can multiply, so let's do that. We've got 15 times 75. That equals, it's right here, 1125. And then you have negative 1 times 9, 10, so that's minus 9, 10. And then we have negative 10 times 75, that's negative 750. And we have 1 times 9, 10, which is plus 9, 10. Okay, we're almost there. We do the subtraction here, and that equals 215. And we do the combination here, uh, the subtraction. Remember, different sign, subtract, keep the sign of the greater number, and we have 160. Okay, so that's telling us that we have 215, 160, and now all we have to do is multiply that times 1 fifth, and that will give us how many cakes and how many pies. Don't forget the Equation uh, has this fraction that we save till last. So we multiply 215 by 1 fifth, or in actuality, we divide by 5, and we get 43. And when we divide 160 by 5, we get 32. So we have 43 cakes, 32 pies. And then what you want to do is uh, check your work. So does 43 and 32 indeed add up to 75? Yes, it does. When you plug 43 in for x and 32 in for y, does this equation equal 910? Yes, it does. So your answer here is 43 cakes and 32 pies. Let's go to the next problem. 
Marcus scored 16 times in last night's basketball game. Okay. Find those notes. Okay, so let's define our variables again. X, this time, will equal the number of two-point shots, and Y will equal the number of three-pointers, three-point shots. So, he made a total of 16 shots, so X plus Y equals 16. Then, X is the two-point shot, so uh, the value, of course, is the coefficient, and the value of the three points is the coefficient, and he made a total of 37 points. So now we have our equation that we can set up as a matrix. So we'll have the coefficient of 1, 1, and the coefficient of 2 and 3, and once again, x and y equals 16 and 37. we got to find that inverse, so let's do it. So it's 1 over the determinant, and the main diagonal is 1 times 3 is 3. The other diagonal uh, is 1 times 2 is 2, and of course that just equals 1. So we can ignore that. 1 times anything we create here will be that thing. So now we're going to switch the elements in the main diagonal and in the other diagonal make the signs opposite. And that's our inverse. And like I said, we can forget about the 1 because it does nothing. And we will multiply that times this matrix here, the 16 and the 37, just like last time. Okay, so here we go. 3 times 16 equals 48. Negative 1 times 37 is, of course, minus 37. Negative 2 times 16 is negative 32. And then we have 1 times 37, which is plus 37. We do the math. We get here 11. Here we get 5. We have no fraction to multiply by, so we have our answer. 11 is the number of two-pointers. 5 is the number of three-pointers. They add up to be 16. When we plug these into our equation, we come out with 37. So we do have 11 and 5. Okay, we got one more. Now this last example is a little more complicated. It requires some thinking. And it's a 3 by 3 matrix. Okay. So here we have 380 change in your pocket. And we have nickels, dimes, and quarters. So we're going to make x equals the number of nickels. y will be the number of dimes. And z equals the number of quarters. OK, so our equation here is going to be x plus y plus z is the total number of coins, which is 25. And then the, the, the amount, the, uh, the value is $3.80, so we have to use the value for each, uh, for each coin. So we have a nickel, 0.05x, plus a dime, we could just make that point zero, you know, one zero, y, and then the quarter is 0.25z. Let me put a slash there. And that total value is $3.80. Now here's where the thinking comes in. They also say that we have one more dime than quarters. How many of each coin do you have? Okay, so here's how you want to think of it. If you have one more dime than quarters, that means that y is greater than the number of quarters, z. How would you get y equal, well, if you have one more dime, sorry, uh, than quarters, how would you get the quarters to equal the dimes? You would add 1 to it, and then you'd have the same number, right? So kind of set it up like that. Think about what you have more of. Here you have more dimes, so y is greater than the quarters. 
How would you make them equal? Add one quarter to z. But now, the trick part is, we got to get all the variables on one side. So if I subtract z, I have y minus z equals a positive 1. And now we just put that in the equation. We have 0 nickels in this. We have a coefficient of 1y. And we have a coefficient for z of a negative 1z. And that equals 1. So now we have all the information to set up our 3x3 three three matrix. We've got coefficients of 1, 1, 1. We've got a coefficient of 0 0.05, 0 0.1. We don't need that extra 0 after the 1. And 0.25. Then on the third row, we have the coefficient of 0, 1, and negative 1. Your x, y, and z. And that all equals your matrix of 25, $3.80, and 1. So now uh, what we want to do is find that determinant in the inverse. And actually, we don't need the determinant this time because we're going to use the calculator. The calculator is going to figure that out for us. So in the calculator, and remember, you have cal if you don't have a graphing calculator at home, I've given you that resource. Uh, it's in your resources folder. It's a graphing calculator as a web page. Okay, let's clear that out. So what I've already done is I've gone to matrix. And let me just show you, I have entered the 3x3 three three matrix. Notice the 1's on top, the 0 0.05, the negative 1, the point, I'm sorry, the 0.1, the 0.25, then we have the 0, 1, and negative 1. So that is matrix A. It's simply what we've been doing before. Let's look at matrix B. All right, matrix B is simply what those equations equal, 25, 3.8, and 1. So the first thing I'm going to do is get the inverse of A, and then I'm going to simply multiply it times B for our answer. So second matrix, select A, press the inverse button, and now we're just going to multiply it by B. Second matrix, 2, Enter, and there is our answer. 4, 11, and 10. So we have 4 nickels, 11 uh, dimes, 10 quarters. And you certainly want to double check your work. Does 4 plus 11 plus 10 equal 25? Yes, it does. If you plug it into the amount equation, will you get $3.80? Yes, it does. Uh, and that's how, what you want to check to make sure that you have it right. So view this video as many times as you can to, until you understand the concepts. I want you to come in strong Monday, ready and able to work. Thank you very much. See if I can end this thing.